gravitation field due to a uniform circular ring at a point on its axis guys quick flash if this was charge q do you remember the result due to a charge come on quick quickly write down the result what was the field at an axial point of a ring electric field quick 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 electric field was k q x upon r square plus x square 3 by 2 x cap if the charge was positive it is radially actually outwards if the charge was negative it was actually inwards do you recall or not you should actually no excuse not to recall but hey this is not charge this is mass let's see what we can do differently the modus operandi does not change divide the ring into small small masses let's take one of the mass dm and let's find out the field due to that dm what's the formula for mass gm by r square so g dm by r square who plays r under root r square plus x square check it out please check it out okay okay relax <clears throat> Do you agree that the mirror image of dm will have a field like this and will have two components like this? So do you agree that this sin theta component in my diagram is getting cancelled or this component is redundant? So which is the effective component or retained component? The axial component. Very good. Please absorb that information so far. Absorb that information, then only I go ahead. Do you agree that d sin theta is a useless uh, component? Because of what? Symmetry of the ring. Okay, sir. Now, DEG for your reference. DEG is G. Again, sir, minus sign. Don't do that. Don't be that person. G dm by r square, sir. Very good. If you want, I can also say G dm upon capital R square plus X square. All okay. All okay, sir. Hmm? <clears throat> That's your DEG. What's your integration? Your EG is not integration DEG. Why is that, sir? Why is that? Because your DEGs are in different directions all over the places. In fact, your EG, in fact, your EG is integration DEG cos theta. The reference is right there in the diagram. So your EG becomes integration, sir. What is DEG? DM by r square you know what let it be r right now it's anyways a constant let it be r what is cos theta pray tell sir cos theta is base upon hypotenuse so it's x upon r sir very good so gm by r cube comes up out does it or not yes it does and inside is integration sorry g x by r cube comes out isn't it yes sir inside is integration dm what is integration dm sum of all masses what is it total mass good so eg is gm x by r cube do you agree or not yes we do sir or r is under root r square plus x square so cube means cubic power of the half so 3 by 2 click look at the answer but sir the answer has a minus sign come on what i derived is the magnitude answer is a vector so that's the reason why the minus sign you can also see the x cap <clears throat> can you see that or not
do you get that or not? That's a more important question, actually. Do you get that? Sure. Any questions? Anything at all? No? So now here is a bit of extra information. Click. I want you to remember one more result. This one. But why? I'll tell you, I think, today itself. Minus GM cos theta by R square. Remember that. Keep it drilled in your mind. It doesn't change anything, does it? It's just an extra result. Now tell me. GM x upon R square plus x square 3 by 2. KQx upon R square plus x square 3 by 2. Do you trust me now? Are we seeing a deja vu? Almost deja vu. Right? What's the extra result I told you to remember? Minus gm cos theta by r square. Remember what small r is. Small r is that slant distance of any point of the ring from that point. Desired point. And what is theta? Angle that line makes with the axis. Did you also get the relevance of minus sign? Good for you. Good. You have the expression now. Now only the magnitude. If I talk about only the magnitude, where will the magnitude be maximum? Differentiate it. We actually have done this, but still. Differentiate with respect to what? With respect to x. So leave the minus out. Gm as it is. Gm as it is. Let's apply quotient rule. Quotient rule says f upon g prime. f upon g whole prime is f prime times g minus f g prime upon g square is it or not right sir so first is who's playing f only x one g r square plus x square three by two minus f x g prime three by two r square plus x square what is 3 by 2 minus 1? Half. And then chain rule 2x. Upon g square. r square plus x square 3 by 2 ka square. So q. And put it equal to 0. Abish? Yes or no? Yes? Good. Now the denominator is gone. Cross multiply since it's not equal to 0, I can cross multiply and make it vanish. Right now, r square plus x square 3 by 2. r square plus x square 3 by 2. Take r square plus x square raised to half common. So, what's left inside? r square plus x square. 2 and 2 cancel minus. 3x square equal to 0. Even the coefficient also not equal to 0? Right. So r square equal to what? 2x square. That implies x equal to what? Plus minus r by root 2. Get it or not? Magnitude of gravitational field at an axial point for a ring reaches its maximum value at plus or minus r by root 2. That's fairly obvious, right? Because two sides are there. That's why. Click. Here we go. Sir, do I need to remember the value? Uh, I suggest don't remember the value of the field. That's okay. That you can always find out whenever you, you put the value. Remember r by root 2. It's worth remembering. It's a nice result to remember actually. Whenever somebody is comparing gravitational field only, sign matters. 